Hey everyone, today we're going to be testing out a pair of All Powers 120 watt solar panels. Now these are their monocrystalline sun power cell version of these panels. They also sell a polycrystalline. These ones are a little bit better with an ETF coating and like I said, sun power solar cells. Now these are excellent quality cells. If you guys see my review video on the X-Star solar panel, it did really well outperforming any of my other panels. And these panels use the same type of cells as that panel. So I was really excited to test these out and see how they perform today. We're going to be plugging them into two different solar generators and see what kind of output we can get from these. Now, when you purchase these panels, they come with a very short cord here that is almost four foot long and it has MC4 connectors on it, which is really nice. It makes it easy to th run them in series together. And you also get a cable that goes from 5521 to MC4. And then they give you a set of adapters here. I actually have the eight millimeter one plugged in. Now the eight millimeter one did seem a little bit loose in some of my solar generators, but it does still work. But 5521 adapter to these four different ports here. This one will charge my Rock Pals Freeman 600. This will charge many of my other solar generators with the eight millimeter plug here you also have a 5525 and another smaller one here overall once the cables attached you get about six and a half feet of cable there coming out of each panel so now let's see what kind of output we can get out of these panels your results are going to vary based on the day where the sun's at in the sky if it's cloudy if it's hazy things like that today is a pretty clear day with spotty clouds here and there but this is gonna be my results from today. So right now I have them paralleled together, running into the Ace Volt portable power station here, and I'm getting 167 watts of input. Now I was getting a little bit more than that earlier, and it shows here on my little meter that I got, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it shows here that at some point, the maximum wattage input was 220 watts, peak and 13.6 amps peak all right so now i only have one panel plugged in and i'm getting about 81 to 82 watts of input on the ace volt from one of those panels so just out of curiosity the x-star sp100 is there plugged into the blue eddy and i'm getting right about 83 watts so now i got one of the all powers plugged into the vatted portable power station getting 86 watts and on the blue eddy i'm getting 85 watts from the x-star sp100 now i have the all powers 120 plugged into the blue eddy and i'm getting 86 watts of input and i have the sp100 panel plugged into the opes getting 85 watts of input so like i said guys very very similar in power to that sp100 panel which is really good because i have yet to find a panel to beat that and these will give it a run for its money for sure so if you're looking for something a little bit more small and portable when they're folded up, then this is going to be a great option for you versus the X-Star SP100, which is a little bit bigger when it's folded up. Still a really nice panel though, guys. But this is going to be another option for you if you want something smaller, more portable, and MC4 connections, which will make it a little bit easier to run in series, which I'll show you right now. All right, so now we're going to run these in series. Right now they're in parallel. In parallel, it's producing about 168 watts into the ACE volt here. 165 and 17.4 volts, 17.7 volts, right around 10 to 11 amps of current running into here. Now keep in mind when you run your panels in series, you double the voltage and the amps stay the same. You do not want to over voltage your portable generator. So this one is capable of up to 50 volts. So it's okay to run these in series. Those ones up there, the Opez, the Blue Eddy and the Vatted are only good up until about 28 to 30 volts. So if you run these panels in series and plug it into one of these, you will damage your unit. Now you can over amp your power stations and it will only accept the amps that it will draw. But if you put too much voltage into them, you will damage the power station. So really easy with these MC4 connections to run them in series right now they're ran in parallel. To run them in series, all you do is take the positive from one to the negative of the other panel, clip it together, and then you have your two positive and negative leads here, clip it together here, and now it's ran in series instead of in parallel. And the open circuit voltage when they're ran in series together is right about 43 to 44 volts 
according to my testing today. All right, so now we're running at about 169 to 170 watts of input, but we're only at 5.12 amps now. So 32.5 volts, 170 watts, five amps. So you can see I doubled the voltage, but the amperage actually got lower. So this is nice to do. And what you have to do sometimes when you have a power station that has a limit on the amperage, for example, the Blue Eddy, the maximum amps is eight amps, but like I said, you can't do this into the Blue Eddy because you'll be over the voltage. So that's something that you wanna keep in mind when you're purchasing one of these power stations is the amperage and the voltage limit for how fast you can charge. This is rated for up to 50 volts of input or 20 amps of input. And like I said, I could run it either way. There really is no difference running it in series or in parallel on this unit because it does have a higher amperage input. So I'm fine running it in series or parallel, but really nice that it has the MC4 connections that allow you to do that easily. It's a little bit harder to do with a cable that comes out of say the SP100 panel because it's an eight millimeter cable that comes out of there. You would need some kind of adapter to split the cabling before you can run this panel in series. But these run in series, no problem. Very easy to connect and very easy to run like that. All right, so the size of these panels unfolded are about 16 and a quarter inches tall by 69 and a quarter inches wide. And that's going from very end to end. And what's nice is they do give you four grommets on each corner to be able to hang this panel either vertically or horizontally if you want to. If you have an easy up, up and you need to hang it on the rails of it or something, it'd be really nice underneath that. You can hang it horizontally between them, which would be nice. So let me show you these legs here real quick and the adjustability of them. There is one leg for each panel and they are really nice heavy duty legs here. Velcroed to the back. Now this is pretty much the only angle that you can get as far as coming back this way. You can't angle them any further. It would have been nice to be able to angle them down a little bit more if the sun was more overhead, but you could always lay them down flat like this if the sun's right above you. Really good for early morning sun or late afternoon sun when it's far away and low in the sky. It would be a great angle for that. And you can actually angle them up a little bit more, but you can't angle them down any more than this unless you lay them completely flat like this one here. So there's not too much adjustability here on this, but I think this is gonna be a pretty good angle overall. The sun is more overhead right now, so this actually isn't really the optimal angle. So I think I'm gonna get better performance laying them down like this. What I wanted to show you is these panels do fold up really small, really compact for travel. They have some clips here that you can clip these on the sides to keep them together. And when they're folded up, they're 16 and a quarter inches wide and about 17 inches tall, not counting the handle. So really nice and portable there. This is the waterproof pouch that they give you on the side to store all your cables and accessories in. Really nice big area there. The leg is on the outside of that, so you don't have to worry about unzipping it if you don't have to. The zipper is waterproof there a little bit, and they do say these are pretty good water resistant, but you can't soak them, or I wouldn't leave them out in the rain either. And that tells you right here not to leave them out in the rain. Now it does state on here that the open circuit voltage is 24.6 volts and short circuit current is 6.6 .6 amps. When I tested these panels on a pretty bright sunny day like today, I was only able to get right around 21.3 volts open circuit current. So I'm not sure if that's wrong or if it's just the type of day it is out today, but I'd never seemed to hit that 24.6 volts open circuit current, which I'm okay with as long as these produce really good output. Maybe in a later video, I'm gonna line up all my solar panels that I have one day on a bright sunny day, and we're gonna test each of them into some different solar generators and see which one produces the most power on the same day. So stick around for that video if that's something you guys wanna see. Now in this test, we're gonna try one panel in partial shading and the other one in full sun to see how much power we lose to see if these are wired in series or if each one of these panels are wired in parallel. So right now I have the one that's partially shaded right here plugged in and we're getting four watts, six watts. So very minimal input on this panel here. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug the one that's in full sun into this unit and see what kind of wattage we can get out of that one. 76 watts of input now, 75, so that definitely tells me that these are wired in series, not in parallel. So you guys are gonna to wanna to make sure you keep your panels out in full sun 
during the day when you're charging your units up and don't let them get partially shaded because you'll lose almost all your input. And one last test, we got the Opez 100 watt panel plugged into the Opez and it's producing 45 watts. And we have the All Powers panel plugged into the Vatted, which is producing 70 watts. So now we're gonna go ahead, unplug the Opez 100 watt panel from here and plug in this All Powers panel to the Opez just to see what it would do. And now we're getting 62 to 63 watts. Yeah, so the All Powers definitely produces a lot more power than the Opez 100 watt panel. So if you guys are interested in any of these panels or anything that I showed in this video, I will leave links down below in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did and found it helpful, please consider subscribing and hitting the thumbs up and leaving a comment down below because it really helps my channel out. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer them. And until then, I'll see you guys around on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Whew.